us Floridians have to wear these along with masks because we haven't seen the sun for years. Hey, it's Steve with Intergun Space, and I'm back. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been months. I've been out like one night, and my neighbors, they all know when I'm gonna do a video because they get out and they do their string trimming and they're yelling and stuff like that. So anyway, what am I doing? I am, uh, I don't know what to do. Like, I looked up and it was clear, and I went, uh, what do I shoot? So I decided to change it up a little bit. I have retired the RC8 by Ioptron, by the Richie Kreitchen Telescope. Yep, put it on put it on pause, let it have a little break, and uh, got my wide field rig that I built here that I'll show you, go over here in a minute, to check off some bucket list items, and one of those is the entire fail complex. Yeah, shooting that. Shot some hydrogen on it last night. Looks pretty good for six hours I got in. So hopefully, put some more onto it tonight, shoot some oxygen on it, maybe some RGB stars. See what we get. All right, so what do we got here? We have the ASI 1600 uh, back from China and the filter wheel all hooked up nice and tight here. Uh, I've got that really close to the ultra wide field uh, TPO 180 or 80 millimeter dew strap. Very important, very, very, very important dew strap uh, right up against the filter wheel. This is the problem I had the other night where I shot like uh, 60 subs. I did get 60 subs on the Seder region and almost every one had a hole in the middle. Anyway, uh, what else have I done here? I've mounted the, um, the ASI Air Pro right in the middle. Uh, I'm just, this is basically what this is, is a piece of aluminum plate mounted to a Lowe's Mandy uh, dovetail. And I've got the, like I said, the ASI Air here in the middle. I'm feeding the cables up from the back. I've got to work on that because I did have a snag last night. Riding beside everything is the Orion 50 millimeter guide scope with the ASI 120. On the angle frame back over here, I've got the Pegasus Pocket Astro Power. Come on, come up with a simpler name. The PP, PP, the PB and J, peanut butter and jelly. I got the peanut butter and jelly. Uh, and basically what it does is it's just controlling the dew bands. Still haven't got the power cords for the ASI Air Pro to actually control the dew bands. And yeah, it's pretty lightweight, but there is enough weight on it that I had to do, you know, one counterweight. So I've noticed that with these mounts, the lighter the rig, the kind of the harder it is to balance. And also the guiding's not as good. Uh, when I had the Ioptron uh, RC8 at like almost 30 pounds, I had pretty good guiding, 0.3. I'm running about 0 0.5, 0 0.4 with some spikes every once in a while of like 14. I'm pretty happy with this little rig so far. I've already done a video on this TPO, but it's a really cool little scope. If you're looking for something wide field and you're really not looking to get into a camera lens kind of situation, uh, you want something that's gonna hold focus really well and not lose focus from bumping. This does have a focus lock, which is pretty important. I do have to use a tiny little batten off mask though. I don't have an auto focuser for it. But right now I just slew to uh, Vega, put it on like a five second loop and um, just keep adjusting the focus. And then I don't adjust the focus at all anymore the rest of the night. So let's let it get dark and we'll jump over here to the iPad, kind of run through what I did to actually set up this target. Uh, because when you're wide field like this and you're wanting to kind of capture some stuff in, 
Um, we'll actually build a target probably, maybe? Maybe, yeah, I'll show you how to do that. So yeah, let's get over here to the iPad, let it get dark, and uh, get set up on the Veil Nebula, shoot some subs. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so what did I do outside? Uh, actually, this is day two because, you know, when I filmed that first part, uh, yeah, the clouds came in. The Astro Gods were like, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> he's trying to, he's trying to do a video <laughs> and shoot some stuff. <laughs> clouds. Yeah, that's what happened. Anyway, uh, so it's night two and uh, I have polar aligned. And one thing about polar aligning in the ASI Air app or the ASI Air Pro is watch your arrows and the minutes and seconds that you're off. Don't look at the bullseye. If you look at the bullseye, sometimes you're trying to move it in one direction, but the arrows are saying, uh -uh, go the other direction. So definitely look at where they're going. And it's a little frustrating, I have to admit, because I get close and then I'm past it. It's like I'm turning and turning and nothing's happening. And all the way, and all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh. anyway, uh, here, let me do this. So, uh, but yeah. Um, and then what else did I do? I took the little mini batten off mask and the scope, I slew to Vega and put it on the TPO and I shot a 10 second loop because uh, that gave me the best stars or the best shot of Vega in the little X pattern. Um, and why did I do that? Because I'm shooting three nanometer HA tonight. So you need a 10 second loop. Um, but a uh, little tip, pro tip, if you're doing, especially like luminance, uh, shoot the quickest loop that you can because you want kind of a dim star when you're doing a batten off. A bright, really super bright saturated star is, is gonna give you a nice X pattern, but you'll find if you dim that star down a little bit or quicken that loop up so the star is dimmer, you're gonna see um, a little better detail on an X pattern and you can hone it in just a little bit better. So. Uh, and then I also had to put the batten off mask over on the guide scope to kind of tighten up those stars. You don't really need super focused stars for guiding, um, but I like to try to focus them up just a little bit. All right, so I'm back. Between the clouds, what clouds? It's all zeros and uh, technical glitches. I think the, ner the, uh, I think the neighbors heard me curse a lot. Anyway, where were we? So we've plate solved. Bam, uh, we're gonna hit the guiding, and of course, what do we got? We got clouds. Let's go over here to the uh, auto run. That's where we're at, weren't we there? We were there, and uh, yeah, because I was telling you about the bin, 60 subs, uh, 480 seconds, eight minutes with the hydrogen. Press okay to that. And what did I tell you? I wanna do the go to home position, but I don't wanna set, shut down the ASI air. Cause I like to look in the morning and see all the cloudy pictures that I take. Our guiding is terrible because our star is lost. Yeah, we just got some really, I got some really low clouds passing through real slow. All right, so let's just hit the start button. So we're gonna hit the start button. Hydrogen filter is checked. And look at that. <laughs> This, this is real stuff. So I'm ready to take an image and it's already into a meridian flip. So I'll tell you what, I'll stay up for the meridian flip. Let's see it flip. And maybe I'll be able to show you an eight minute sub. Hey moon, just ready for the flip happening in seven seconds. Oh my gosh, what a night. Anyway, figured I'd show you the flip. All right, so we're flipping. Let's check these cables, make sure nothing happens. Funky with them. Yeah. So it's basically target coordinates and then it's showing the curtain, current coordinates. Let's try to get them to match. How about that? So let's see what it's doing. And we got clear skies. We got a crazy looking uh, 
headband here. Let's turn that off. That's better. So coordinates are almost, they are, they're spot on. Spot on. So one thing that I've noticed is that with the hydrogen alpha, I actually solve faster because it's less stars. And I have a luminance filter in there. It's like 4,000 stars. It takes forever to solve. Let's check and see what the guiding's doing. It's pretty terrible right now. It's got to settle in. All right, let's get inside and uh, run a sequence and see what we got. Okay. So it is uh, taking a picture. Started automatically taking a picture. We're 413 seconds in. Our guiding is starting to level out a little bit. It's not as critical to get that number way down there when I'm shooting at uh, 180 millimeters, uh, which is one good thing about a wide focal length like that. Okay, we're pretty close. I'm excited. I've seen it before, but I'm excited for you guys. Yeah, you guys. We're five seconds away. All right, and we're firing away another. Let's check our guiding out. 0.28? Touchdown! Yes! 0.28! Uh, we're not downloading. But seriously, after all my problems tonight, 0.28. Huh. PTL. We did it. Look at that. Look at, look at all the room I have. And it's got this little whippy tail thing coming out here, too. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's detect our stars. Wow, 2.28. We got some nice tight stars. Let's check out that guide one more time. 0.44. Something happened. Maybe a moth landed on it. I don't know. I don't care. That's good enough. Oh. So hopefully at the end of this, when it cuts to pretty music. There'll be a nice color version, HOO version of the uh, Veil Nebula. Uh, but if not, maybe it's just HA. I don't know. See how impatient I get. Anyway, I'm finally getting to say it. You know it. Hey, like and subscribe. I don't ever say that, do I? Do I ever ask you guys to subscribe? Do it. What are you waiting on? I don't know. But uh, until then, clear skies. <laughs> and clear minds.